Last time on Building Resilience, we were installing Marvin's high-density fiberglass frame windows and the stacking sliders, both of which are in their modern collection. The windows are fastened through the frame rather than through a fin, which makes it very easy to get the frames perfectly straight. But the huge sliding stacking doors were sort of the star of the show. So the uh, the slider is a four panel slider and each of those panels uh, comes in around 130 pounds a piece. Uh, and then the track that it, that it sits in is all unassembled when it arrives. So we get these super long crates that are super cool. We turn them into work tables afterwards, all designed to protect the components. And um, you lay them all out on the ground and you start to go through this instruction manual and you think, wow, this is, <laughs> this is gonna take a few hours. And, uh, and it does, but, it, but honestly, at the end of the day, the frame that you're working with is so lightweight that it makes it really easy for two people to to handle it, set it into position, make little adjustments, start to tack it into place. You know, one of the cool things that Marvin has done um, with their instructions process is they've added in, added in QR codes. So um, as you're going along and you're like, huh, I'm trying to figure out this, how is that screw going in and what location, you just scan the QR code and a little video pops up and it's showing you um, in context, what you're what you're about to do. So that was pretty cool. Now that the windows are installed, the crew is making hay. Drywall's up, and the painters are even inside painting trim. While he finishes up, we're going to go outside for a peek at what we're covering this week: water management through WRBs and rain screen systems that provide vented claddings. The primary WRB was the zip system sheathing on the outside of the R12 panels. But because this house will feature an open joint cladding system from AZ, in some parts, Michael uses a black WRB from Benjamin Obdike called Invisirap UV because it's designed to disappear behind open cladding systems and it has excellent resistance to ultraviolet light rays that break down mere mortal building materials. The other cladding type on this house is a three-quarter inch PVC panel from AZEC. The AZEC sheets with PaintPro technology will cover the Slicker Max rain screen, and the open cladding will go over the black Invisirap UV. Well, the house is almost fully wrapped now. All of the zip panel is pretty much vanished. And you can see that how we're changing between our ventilated rain screen and our Invisirap periodically throughout the house. This is as our cladding types change, we're changing our methodology. We've got batten strips that still have to go up on this Invisirap that will bring it out to the same plane as the Slicker Max. Ultimately, we'll have a 3 8 inch air gap around the entire structure, including everything back here. Here we have the intersection between our Invisirap WRB and our ventilated rain screen system with our Home Slicker Max, which then continues on around the house. Now that portion of the house, as you can see, is the zip system is our WRB. And technically this side of the house also has the zip system as our primary WRB, but because we're doing an open joint cladding system, we also have this Invisirap building paper, which will give us that beautiful shadow line behind our cladding system. We also have this very unusual um, flashing tape, which some people might be familiar with, but I think a lot of people aren't. And it's kind of a fabric-y looking material. Um, and it's slightly vapor open. This product is also vapor open. It's important in a cold climate. So we want to make sure that um, we're using the right product behind an open joint cladding system, which is not going to be your typical WRB. Before the Invisirap UV or Slicker Max can go on though, the primary WRB needs to be completely sealed off. Michael explains the flashing process on a couple of wall penetrations. I'd like to talk about pipe flashing. So here's, uh, here's what we've got. We've got one layer of zip tape 
that goes inside the opening and is seated all the way underneath. And then the second layer of zip tape that goes over the top like a hood, kind of like a shroud. So it's nicely protected. This opening is really well flashed. It's foam back there, so it's air sealed. And in case water comes and drips around here, we know it's not going to get into the OSB. It'll roll down the face. Sometimes uh, your HVAC guys cut oddly shaped holes like this one that are larger than what they need to be and don't give you the opportunity to flash it first. So again, same concept on this one, except we've added a third component. So we have the seat. Then we have a side leg that comes down here. And then we have the top that goes across there. So we're still lapped in our flashing order, right? So from top to middle to bottom. And I think that that's going to stay nice and dry. So with the windows and the holes in the wall sealed against leaks, we're ready to begin the rain screen process. But first, we want to take a minute to answer what is sure to be a question coming up. Do you have to seal all the nail heads on the Zip System sheathing products? No. The answer is no. Fasteners that are deeply overdriven should be sealed with a piece of tape or liquid flash, but what you see here is overachieving, not following the installation guidelines. Okay, let's put up some Invisi-Wrap. It comes in about a five foot roll, so one worker can install it quite well by themselves. To place the battens, the crew snaps lines every 16 inches. They're not aiming for studs because there's two inches of foam between the cladding and the studs. Engineers from Azex said it would be fine to screw into the half inch outer structural sheathing of the Zip System R12 panels. Our open joint cladding system, it's really important that we keep the cladding system from being held tight to the building paper. We want drainage back there because water is going to get back in there. And so for that, we have these battens. Now these battens are from Benjamin Obdike. They're the Batten UV products. Batten UV. The UV stable black plastic because of course we don't want to see the strip from the outside. So this will help keep it invisible. But you'll notice it's got all of these holes in it and that allows air to pass horizontally through the system as well as vertically. One of the problems with wood furring strips is that they're solid and if you've got a solid block here and you run up say to something like the bottom of a window like this well now the air is trapped between this cavity and this cavity and it, if you forget to leave a gap there you can't get out. Now on an open joint cladding system that's less of an issue because of course there's openings everywhere but if I were to be say uh, installing a lap siding or some other product and I didn't have a home slicker up then my furring strips would create that condition so I'm in favor of either using something like this entangled matrix type system that allows air to flow every direction back here and it's really hard to ever cut it off because it runs behind everything and you don't have to monkey around with individual furring strips and if you have to do furring strips Something like these core, these, uh, these core vented Batten. UV. UV battens that allow air to move through the system this way and through the system this way, reducing the likelihood that you will um, stop the airflow in there somewhere, create a bottleneck, and not get the ventilated rain screen action that you're looking for. Battens are stapled to the wall to hold the cladding off the WRB. So note that the stapler is going sideways. Click, click. So that we don't compress the batten. On the other parts of the house, Slicker Max is installed similarly to how Invisirap is installed. One piece at a time, off a ladder with a stapler. It cuts like any other roll product, fairly easily with a sharp knife. This is pretty cool. You can see here at this connection point, the slicker 
It's holding us off of the house by about three-eighths of an inch. And that's really important. It's also important that we have this Slicker Max, which helps keep this entangled matrix from compressing. Because a point load could compress it, but this fabric helps reduce that. And then when we figure our siding, our cladding material, pushing against this like this, it's very, very, very difficult to compress, to compress that material when I'm putting um, pressure on a larger surface area. Kind of like a snowshoe, I think, is a good, meta like a, that'd be a good analogy, right? When you step on a snowshoe, it keeps you on top of the snow because it's of its surface area, even though it has lots of holes in it. This is the same, same thing here. We don't need a solid furring strip to hold our cladding system off, of our, off the building. We can have something with lots of holes in it that lets air flow behind it in all directions, up and down, left and right, diagonal, and still has the ability to resist that compressive strength when I go to put my cladding on. Speaking of cladding, we mentioned earlier there are two types, and we're going to talk about one of them next week, the open joint cladding system from AZEC. We're also going to do some weird science to see if this whole rain screen system actually works. All right, guys, I have here this very scientific tool. It's a hose with a spray nozzle. And I'm going to water the wall in a way that it doesn't, doesn't, isn't. It's never going to see water like this, but we're going to make a point. And um, I'm going to do my best to spray the wall and pan the camera at the same time. So hold on, here we go. Ready? Lots of water. It is rushing out of the bottom of the cavity. There's a little bit coming over the surface, but the majority of that is coming through out of the bottom of the wall. Crazy. I'm willing to bet that pretty much all the water that we put in that wall, like 95% of it plus has drained out at this point. Until then, Stay tuned and stay resilient.